watching UBC, the big network that inspires Uganda. I believe your evening is wonderful. My name is Prince Nick, and I feel extremely excited that we have another opportunity to talk about things that pertain to things that we believe in when it comes to our faith. Well, I hope you're enjoying your new year already. And as I come on the show, lots is happening in the news. One, for those of you who love music, Don Mowen will be in the country very soon for yet another worship experience. Yeah, Don Mowen is a renowned worship artist that has mm, made us wow to go through his music as we grow up in our Christian faith. Then, of course, those guys who do local music, the Vega Music Awards nominations and registrations are on. If you are an artist and would love to take part in that, please get yourself aware that it's happening. Well, this evening, I'm excited and humbled to host a wonderful man of God. This is Pastor Selina Kagwa from the Nkokonjeru Church Fellowship, where he's the lead pastor and also national team leader of Leadership 555. These guys, mentor leaders, you're mm. welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Good evening to you. How are you? I feel excited to be here also. Amen. Yeah. How is the new year treating you so far? Oh, it's, uh, I think it's afraid of me. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't feel an apprehension because it has come. I, I feel ready for it. Amen. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful, so, wonderful. Mm. Well, today we are talking about discipleship. Yeah. Discipleship. Mm. Discipleship. What is discipleship? Uh, discipleship is just a, it's an English word. Yeah. But it has a connotation of a program that is intentionally designed to bring up somebody to a certain bar with a certain mark in a practical way. When people talk about discipleship, hmm. uh, it uh, rhymes so much with the church. Is discipleship that word hmm. designed to work with the church or it can be used to, for any other discipline? Ah, it, can, it applies to any other discipline. Hmm. Uh, like in music, you can be a disciple of a certain artist. Ah. So you take on his way of doing things and you rise to the bar that when people listen to you, they know you have been tutored or discipled by that person. Mm. For instance, I'm a Kadonkamu artist, you know. Mm. So I'm a disciple of Christopher Sevaduka, mm. who is the grandfather of the Kadongo Kamus. Mm -hmm. I never brushed with him, but I took on his lessons as a disciple. And when I play, you cannot tell who is playing. It could be him or me. This uh, uh, deliberate strategy yeah. or plan uh -huh. designed with a bar. Mm. What is its importance for the one discipling mm. and the one being discipled, especially uh, in relation to church issues? In because church this is issue. Christian for us. Okay. Now let us apply it from the Christian perspective, yes. particularly beginning with Christ, mm. because we get so much of it mentioned in scriptures in regard to Christ and those who followed him. Mm. Not everyone who followed Christ was a disciple. Not everyone who followed Christ was a disciple. But all disciples were followers in the first place. Mm -hmm. So it begins with an interest. Somebody presents himself or herself as something, having something to give to the community that will raise their standard of living and make them better in any way they want. So in terms of Jesus, he comes to give mankind a standard of living that will benefit them and glorify God. Mm. So he commissions the first 12 apostles and tells them, go into the world and make disciples of all nations, mm. teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you and I'm, I'm always with you. Mm. So when you listen to that, he's commissioning them to go and turn these nations into disciples, people and nations in that country, uh, natives in that country, to behave exactly like him. So, so they have to be taught all the disciplines required to attain to the level of the discipler. Because he says in scripture, mm. the disciple is not above his discipler. Mm. But if he is adequately prepared and trained and given the right disciplines and complies, he will rise up to the bar of his discipler. Mm. So that's the bar. Now, the importance here is that uh, the discipler benefits by his legacy, yes. getting on and on and yeah. on to his disciples. His disciples. And then the disciple benefits in uh, 
having a raised uh, standard of living that, uh, you know, w in life we fidget a lot. Mm. Try this, try that, it's try and error. So a disciple uh, is saved from the trial and error experiences. Where Wonderful. Yeah. From the way you explain it, mm. and uh, by observation, mm. do we have discipleship, especially in the Pentecostal church? Oh, ah, that's great. <laughs> yes. The way you put it across, <laughs> oh my, it gets mm. me to wonder whether we really have discipleship mm. in the Pentecostal church. I'm going to answer it in two ways. Mm. One, uh, we have. I say, yes, we have. And then I say, no, we don't have. When I say we have, we have our own bars, created standards, our Pentecostal standards, and we teach you those. Now, those are Pentecostal standards. They are not Christ standards. Mm. So when we train our own to become like that, we have put that bar. It is this law. Once you speak in tongues, you talk about miracles, you are excited, you sing loudly, you, you pray. Right? When you do that, then you have hit the bar. Now, that is below Christ's standard. So if Pentecostals are aligned with Christ's purpose, they are doing a shortage work. Mm. There's no discipleship as regards to Christ. Mm. But as regards to the denomination, yeah, we have a multiple disciples. Mm. Yeah, you just go here and then you hear them shout, you know, those are disciples, Pentecostal disciples. Mm. They do what the Pentecostals teach. And that's the mark, that's the back. Wow. You have put it across quite a very interesting. Thank now, you. This brings me to wonder, mm. which actually is something that is very paramount for someone that is viewing us. Mm. What is the bar of Christ? Mm. Because if Pentecostals have their own bars, mm -hmm. that means there is a bar of Christ. Yes. What was Christ's intention mm. of the discipleship bar that he set? And what is that bar? He came here as a son of God and to give us a standard of how sons of God should behave. So he became the role model of life. Mm. Whoever has lived on, on earth and failed is not the role model, but the only person who lived life in the exact format God wanted man to live is Christ. So he sets the bar. Mm. And God has called those who believe in him. If they believe God, they sub, uh, uh, subscribe to Christ's lordship and they are destined or predestined to be conformed to the very image of Christ, mm. so that he is the bar. It's not a set of words, it's he is the bar. You have to be conformed or transformed to the very image of Christ. The way he thinks, the way he speaks, the way he does things. That's the bar. I love that. The way he thinks, the, the way, way he sees things, and the way he speaks, the way he conducts himself, that is the bar. And the Bible says, whoever is in him ought to walk like he walked. So we have the bar. It is him. That means that someone must understand yes. the mind of Christ. Yes. Why he came. How does one understand the mind of Christ? It's simple. You read the scriptures. You read the scriptures. Yeah. Particularly the gospels. In the gospels, there are, there are four accounts. All of them give a perspective, an angle of approach to how Christ lived and why he did several things and how he did them and when. You know, he was very holistic in a, in a social life and a spiritual life. He was a real person. There was nothing uh, super spiritual about him. He was real. You can imitate him. He's not complicated. Mm. And one of his mark, his greatest mark, his love, he commanded his disciples, a new commandment I give you, that's in John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you see, he sets the example and then he challenges them. Love one another as I, I have loved you. Loved you. Yeah. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Now, when I, I look at my Bible, hmm. The way Jesus 
picked people to disciple mm -hmm. because you say that not everyone who follows Jesus was a disciple, was a disciple mm -hmm. but every disciple was a follower of Jesus, Jesus in the initially. He was going to, 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 to the lake, mm -hmm. king, uh, mm -hmm. fishermen, mm -hmm. and if you follow me, you mm -hmm. follow me. So now, in our contemporary, mm -hmm. how do you choose one to disciple? Oh, that's a very important question. In fact, it has a dual aspect. Mm. One, the discipler must be willing to disciple somebody. Mm. You, ha you have something to pass on. Many people are mean about uh, tricks and uh, techniques of success. Mm. They don't want, rich people don't want to disciple other people to become rich people. Mm. But there has to be a willingness from the discipler himself to give it out, all of it. Have you discipled some Kadonkamo singers because you are discipled by Mukuru Sevadukon? Now um, that will bring the next the, the, the question. <laughs> okay. Now the second part is mm. the disciple must desire. Of course. Now, some like me, I'm a willing teacher. I want to teach people to become good Kadonkamo players. Mm. I've discipled several, but they did not desire, they didn't express great desire to come to the bar. So I've got a level whereby others have not come to match it. Mm. They are so content. Once they learn the, the, you know, the simple chords and fingering, uh, you know, the scales, they give it up. They don't have the pursuit to go the full course. Mm. So it takes the disciple, the discipler, a willingness to give it out and also matched with the disciple who is desirous of taking it on. Mm. They will go the full extent. They can't stop at anything. A bat, the, 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 you know, the bat. So it's a, a mutual, a, a dual responsibility. A willingness to give and a willingness to receive. Now, relating to what we just said that the church needs or desires discipleship. Yes. Can we say that the church is not willing to be discipled by Christ himself so they choose their standards? Yes, very much. You have put it right. The Church leadership is content with their own created bars, and that is sufficient to them. And then, even those who are at certain levels, will, uh, we are practically mean when it comes to giving people tricks, let me call them tricks, but mm. take understanding, insights on how to live a good life. Mm. We would want them to remain at that stage of uh, undeveloped and uh, always interdependent. Why? We gain a lot from that. When I'm the man of God, mm. I know how to pray. Mm. I convince you, I call God and he answers me, you can't. So come to me, I'll pray for you. You become a dependent on my life. Whereas I'm supposed to train you to do it yourself. You see Christ, he knew how to pray to his father mm. and he taught his disciples how to pray. And he said, I will not even pray for you because the Father hears you in the same way he hears me. So mm. do it yourself. Mm. But in the contemporary church, the priest is a big person. He knows everything. The others know nothing. The pastor is the big man. He knows everything about God. You know nothing. When it comes how they perform miracles, they say, God, man of God, I want to tell you the Spirit of God came upon, came upon him. They will never take to put you down to show you how it really happens. Mm. There's nothing mystical about being used by God. Mm. It's, there's nothing mystical about it. You can share it and lose nothing. But many times we, sh we fear to share those uh, insights because people will rise up and equal us. In leadership we teach, leadership is a divine assignment to develop those committed to your charge, to your very level, so that they can, you know, you can, you can be replaced as soon as possible. Who wants that in a normal life? I want I, to sit on I, my seat I, forever. I, I love it. <laughs> in fact, I, I, I have places mm. where I've delegated leadership mm -hmm. and people come to me, why did you do that? Yeah, then, you know, I, I feel that, you know, I have people who have lived to the expectations to of the office yes. I'm doing mm -hmm. and it's just good mm. for me to give them the office. And then they take on. Train them to the capacity, your own capacity, so that they replace you as soon as possible. The sooner that happens, the better for humankind. Wow. And when you leave that space, it does not mean that you become nothing. You go up. If you stay there, you go down.
Do you only teach church leaders or you uh, teach well, even business leaders and other leaders? We focus on Christians okay. because they give us better substance to do these things. Because when you talk about leadership in Christianity, we understand it as a service, not as a privilege to benefit. So, Going back to discipleship, yeah. there must be a willing disciple. Yes, and a willing disciple. They have to equal. In our churches today, mm. I'm seeing a lot of willing disciples. Please. Okay. But no willing, but dis not willing disciples. disciples. Yeah. How are we going to overcome this? I don't know how God works in such situations, but I know he never fails to have his way. Yeah. One thing he does, if you are on the top and you are not willing to do the assignment, he finds a way. He has many ways of ejecting you mm. from that seat mm. and he replaces you with somebody else. And many times he causes movements. If this church and its leadership are not willing to move on in God, it is God who moves out and his people who want development move out with mm -hmm. him. Wow. And you see why these are um, uh, commonly known denominations, they, you know them, I don't want to mention them, but those major traditional denominations, mm. they are crying for, because when they fail to raise their bar, people were agitated and feel discontented. They, they fail, a disciple knows there's something more to learn, but it's less is given, and they struggle in life. So when they hear somebody out there who is giving it out better than their leaders, they choose to move out. Mm. So God does it. With the Pharisees, they failed to raise the standard of uh, faith among the Jews. Mm. They kept on giving them traditions passed on by men. They had lowered the standard, the bar. What Moses said, they had lowered it. Mm. They were changing the, the commandments of God. And when Christ came, he set the bar again. This is what the law says. This is what we should do. Mm. And the people who wanted change, they flocked to Jesus. And these guys became jealous of him. But what he was doing, he was discipling willing souls mm. into having a good life, how to live life. He said, I came that they may have life mm. and have it abundantly. Mm. There are principles you have to learn if you're to have, if you going to have a good marriage. Mm. There are principles you have to learn if you want to have good finances. There are principles. He came to give out those principles. Mm. And he was relentless on that. Three years, nonstop was doing that and he left a host of mm. people who had really changed their lives and they had taken on his approach. Wow. Now you say it something that is very important mm. and I'll quote you again. Quote me. That a discipler mm. should disciple people mm -hmm. or train them mm -hmm. or mentor them mm. to come to his, his own standard, very standard, so that he becomes replaceable. He can leave that space. Once I have trained you to drive, why should I continue to drive? I give up. I go to something else. Or I take on somebody else. You see Paul? Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Christ. Mm. And he said uh, in First Corinthians chapter 4, I think verse 14, there was a crisis in that church. He sent Timothy, his son, who knows my ways, who will tell you about how I go about things. He wanted to be clear that people don't miss the bar and the mark. Mm. When it comes to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, he says, The things we have heard from me and from many witnesses commit to faithful men who will be faithful in committing them to other men. Mm. So kind of four generation, Paul, Timothy, faithful men, and others. It's a, it's a program. And in the same book, Second Timothy, I think chapter 3, somewhere, I said, you have known my ways, my patience, my faith, my love, my purity. You know, he lived it out. In Christianity, you live this life out. You don't transmit on paper and, mm. and, and ink. It's, mm. You live that life out. It's an apprentice approach. An apprentice is where uh, by a master takes on a junior, and the junior works under the senior. The, pro, uh, the professional, mm. and they learn the tricks of the trade. Mm. So in Christianity, Christ came to live here for three, for three consecutive years. He was living out the kind of life he wanted his disciples to aspire to. 
and they saw it. Mm. And they said, we cannot abandon what we have heard and have seen. And when they looked at them, they knew they had been with Christ. Jesus. And you know, you are a good Christian, you know. Yeah. The word Christians emerged in the church of Antioch after seeing this brand of people who were living a different kind of life. And then they were mentioning so much about Christ, 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 and then Christians. It was a nickname because they resembled the master they claimed mm -hmm. to follow. Mm -hmm. So he gave it out. Now in the subsequent generations, Paul does the same. Peter does the same. They take on Christ, they understand him, they take on the charge of training others into living a successful Christian life. It's not always for the benefit of God. It is always for the benefit of the disciple. They are the ones who need that level. So God in his grace gives it out. And if you're really desirous of having a good life, you devote yourself to being that excellent disciple. You can match Jesus Christ. It is divine. Wow. Now, mm -hmm. you are a trainer of leaders. Yes, please. And uh, you train especially church leaders. Yes. And uh, the leaders you train have jurisdiction mm. in terms probably of, say, a church. Yes, okay. And uh, given the way you've explained discipleship, mm. Who, to, to, to whose loyalties should the disciples mm. go? Where, do they, where should they put their loyalty? Mm. Is it to that church leader or somewhere else? First, Christian loyalty should be given to Christ. Because we, when we believe that he died for us and we confess him as Lord, that we acknowledge him to be Lord over our lives, mm. then he becomes the absolute Lord, no other. Mm. So, the loyalty that comes to the discipler, physical discipler, is given to them because they are exhibiting their own loyalty to Christ. Mm. If they waver in their loyalty to Christ, we, are, we, are, we have every right to flee away from them. That's what I was going to ask you. <laughs> uh, Run for your uh, life. Uh, uh, believers are yeah. liberty. Yes. To leave a church. Yes. If they discover that, that this disciple is not the right kind. It is an exhortation in Hebrews chapter 13, I think verse 7, mm. uh, verse 6 or 7 there. Have respect for those who preach to you the word of God mm. and submit to them, observing the end of their faith. Mm. Jesus Christ, who is their Lord and your Lord, is the same yesterday Today and, forever. and forever. Now, if they keep on changing, they are not it the kind. Because the standard leader we follow changes not. If you met me 30 years ago, you would tell that I'm still on track mm. or I've gone. Mm, track. Yeah. Then the Bible says that Jesus mm. said, go and make disciples mm, of all nations. Of all nations. Mm. How is every believer going to become a pastor? Oh. oh. Because I've been discipled to come to the level <laughs> of a disciple. Okay. <laughs> now Christ is a multifaceted guy. Yes. Or uh, let me not, not him guy, but a much faceted person of his body we are. Now, leadership is not uh, restricted to church leadership per se, that you have to be a pastor and apostle, no. As a husband, you are a leader. As a father, you are a leader. As a firstborn, you are a leader. As a prefect in school, you are a leader. So when you talk about leadership, you can hit the bar of Christ even when you are prefect in school. Mm. So I will train you to behave like Christ in that level and uh, circle of leadership. In fact, more to that, mm. people says leadership starts with myself. Yes. So uh, 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 even my lifestyle mm, yeah. is also another way of exercising yes. leadership. In fact, you, you, don't, leadership. you don't need a title to become a leader. Yes. And in fact, leaders, true leaders, don't walk by titles. It's functional. Wow. It's the influence. You leave it out, people will follow. If there is a saying, if you find yourself walking alone and you are a leader, you are just taking a walk. <laughs> because if you are a true leader, you are influencing other people to, to fall. Yeah. Them. And you are not dragging them. Leaders don't they, drag they people. Willingly. They come willingly. Uh, Pastor Semina Kapua. Mm. And Washington. That's 
the other Christian name? Washington. Washington. Yeah. I love that. There are people who know me by that name only. Pastor Washington, Serena Hagua. Yeah. Are, are you having a deliberate strategy to help the church be discipled on the right foundation? Very much so. What are you doing? I've got two fronts. One is the general front. I lead Leadership 555, which is a leadership development approach, mm -hmm. helping leadership develop in the seven spheres of life, mm -hmm. of uh, society, mm -hmm. influence. Mm -hmm. That is faith, family, governance, yes. business, oh, yeah. uh, education, uh, leisure. People don't want <laughs> entertainment. And, uh, you know, those, we develop leaderships in those spheres. We have specific programs for developing leaders and we run an incubator mm. when it's an incubator that's where a, a place where uh, it's a, a, in an intentional environment you put eggs fertilized eggs to grow and, to hatch. Grow up and hatch mm. it's a natural process it's very organic yes. so we have that one mm. on the other hand uh, uh, we have what we call national ministry team it is it is a platform for all leaders who are struggling who have not been nurtured who have not built up relationships to because you cannot do it alone in church you need the other components so we have created that platform in christ that all those who are leaders you don't have to start a church to exercise leadership mm. no you just explained it yeah, well, yeah. Right? you don't have to start a church so come, we come together we, we, we share christ and we allow him to uh, bring out the giftings we have and we give them platform to execute and that's why I believe we can help a lot of churches from the restricted, you know, administration. I cannot go to the Catholic Church to help them mm. because I was not trained by them. Mm. And that is absurd. Mm. I cannot reach out to the Pentecostals. I was born, again, uh, in the Pentecostal circles. But I don't ascribe to Pentecostalism. It's narrow. So I ascribe to Christ yeah. very free. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ, yeah. and that is enough. Yeah. So I... I, I labor to explain that to people that you don't have to belong to this and that to become excellent. Mm. They, we can have a, a common platform whereby we all can excel with the support of each other. I don't have to pull you down to become tall. Glory to God. Yeah. I hope you had a wonderful experience when Pastor Washington Sevina Kagwa mm. was uh, you know, putting out his understanding of what discipleship is all about. Mm. In fact, I loved it. I love it and I discover that most of us actually need to get this kind of discipleship that is way leading us to, to Jesus Christ himself. I want to wish you a wonderful weekend and week. Catch you again next Sunday. From myself and the entire crew that I worked with, we love you. God bless you. Amen.